thing that we can actually do is what we can handle. Me, myself. I'm not rocking with the negative shit no more. If a nigga do some negative shit, I'm going to treat him like he just fucked another nigga in the ass. Until we start pushing these type of energies away, shit going to continue. And if they are doing um, organ harvesting and all that shit like that, we'll never fucking find out. Because they know where to pick from. They're not getting the fucking doctor up on the hill. They're not getting the, the, the uh, Farrakhan and them. No. Al Sharpton. Right here. They're pushing. How, how, how does this not make sense? How does this not make sense? The same fucking, the rap trap. The same people that push Kodak Black, Glock 9, Skinny from the 9, Lil Pump, and all these fucking retarded ass rappers in your face, gang, 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 is the same people that not only run the pharmaceutical companies, but actually run the black market with organ harvesting. The same did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. Um, if you want, if you want, um, you might be at the wrong, I, I'm, let's say this first, you might be on the wrong channel, if you want me to, ah, Dr. Sebi, he doing a movie, ah, they came and got him out of nowhere, um, welcome back to the rap trap, welcome back to the rap trap, we gotta understand what the rap trap is, I'm Ayo Seiko. Fearless leader of AO Nation and the Men Too movement. And um that's really important right now. Because once again, another black man was taken out the game. But if you look at the media, they'll tell you that we need to protect the women. It's the women. Because they might get looked at, or somebody might holler at them or something like that. So this is definitely going on the Men Too podcast. Because they would make you believe that men can't be victims, even by our own hand. This is, in hindsight, this is, are you serious? And this is, um, the reason why a underwater welder gets paid more than a regular welder is because Underwater welding is more dangerous. The reason why a firefighter gets paid more than a teacher is because firefighting is more dangerous. I'm hearing this narrative go around. Ah, ah. Nah, he he ain't had no beef with nobody. Ah, the game shit ain't had nothing to do with it, man. That shit. Ah, that's just a cover up. As if gang bangers don't die. As if being in a gang is as safe as just being a, a regular person. Um, as soon as you come into the streets, as soon as you come into the streets, we're we going to leave the rap shit out of it. As soon as you come into the streets, you're no longer, you don't even live by the same codes as a civilian. That's why they call regular people civilians. They can tell the police, they can call the police, they can get up on the stand they can do all kind of shit. But as a street nigga, you're bound by a whole different code. As a street nigga, you're supposed to either die or go to jail. As a street nigga, you're supposed to either die or go to jail. What's crazy now is as soon as you become a rapper, you then have that same fucking code and that same blanket over you as a street nigga. You're no longer a civilian. As soon as you become a rapper, a rapper, now you're supposed to die or go to jail. Just like a street nigga. Now you put a nigga who's a rapper and a street nigga, 
At this point in time, I want to, um, I want to magnify what, what, what actually went on here because this situation has already taken place. Nipsey Hussle has already, it's already happened. At this point in time, all we can do is be reactive for the next person, but I call that being proactive. So for you, the gang member who feels like, ah, ah, don't dispel the fact that he was a crip out of your mind as if like that wasn't played into it. Um, if Farrakhan was killed, who would we say did it? This just a, if Farrakhan got killed, who would we say did it? Would we say it was a rival gang? Would we say it was a rival religion? Would we be looking amongst ourselves or would we know for a fact that our true enemy, we know that our true enemy did that because we know that as far as us as a black community, he's for us. Not to say about, you know, um, Martin Luther King, and, well, Martin Luther King, obviously, but Malcolm X and shit like that, I, we even know from that point, we know that that was done by the enemy. But when once you put this cover over you, uh, earlier today, Nipsey made a uh, post saying, um, it's a blessing to have strong enemies. You understand? And it's niggas out here making way more exaggerated posts than that. But understand, we have, as black people, we have a history of not only jealousy and, and extreme hatred towards one another, we also have a history of allowing our emotions to control our physical actions. You understand? I always said that the um, physical way to express happiness is to smile, which is a natural emotion. Happiness. The physical way to express sadness is to cry. And the physical way to express jealousy is to hate. I'm jealous of the Jordans you got on, so I, I fuck them shits, man. Fuck that nigga, man. And that's us. That's what we do. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let me say some some just crazy shit right fast. What if we took off? What if we used this situation to say we don't want to wonder anymore? We don't. We don't want to have to wonder anymore. So, from this point forward, if any violence takes place, we know it's going to come from the true enemy. And the only way we can do that is, I'm no longer blood. I'm no longer crip. I'm no longer folk. I'm no longer vice lords. I'm a black man. And my game is the black community. But that's, that's retarded. And as long as that's that as long as that's outlandish, we'll continue to get picked off. Because the perfect cover for a fucking hit is to say rival gang members killed him and we'll have to speculate. Ah uh, speculate. We knew when Martin Luther King died. Yeah. What no black person would fucking kill him. It's a bullshit with and I, I hate I can't use Malcolm X. As a fucking example. But we know. We know if we were one. But we're not one. We hate each other. In real life. Nipsey Hussle is Lil Ray Ray. Nipsey Hussle is Man Man. Nigga you can't stand a nigga right down the street from you. If you had an opportunity right now. You would murk that nigga. And niggas would be sad and shit like that. Just like this. My only issue with these. The rapper deaths. The only issue I have with these rapper deaths. Is that they're upheld. 
as if it means more than the funeral we just had yesterday, than the funeral we had last week, than the funeral we're going to have in two days. That's my issue. That's my only issue. Why in the fuck do we wait till today to say, man, this shit got to stop, man. Man, this shit got to stop. This is the only reason I'm speaking on it. Only reason I'm speaking on it because maybe I can, maybe somebody can hear. But understand, just as long as this is what we love, as long as we love banging, as long as we promote hatred towards each other and we buy that shit like it ain't nothing, man, how the fuck we gonna get mad? This is gangster shit, nigga. You can peek through the shit and try to find out what and what, man. What the fuck? Who, who are we talking about? The CIA? We, the people who are under their surveillance, we're going to fucking pinpoint what fucking agency killed a nigga? When they can throw all this shit in the media, he was a gang member. Oh, some people were hating on him. It, that's exactly what happens in real life every day. A black man gets killed because he's in the wrong gang. Because he's in the wrong neighborhood. Because he's doing good and niggas is hating. Before they even say anything on the fucking media about fucking, oh, uh, he was doing a documentary with Dr. Sebi. He was trying to help people. They don't give a fuck how smart a nigga he is. He's a gang member. Are you telling your child that you can be smart, you can uh, do good business, you can do this, this, and this, you can be the president? After being a gang member, are you going to tell him, don't fuck with that. Don't fuck with that. That's a one-way ticket. Don't fuck with that. As soon as you jump into the street, nigga, your murder go unsolved. Easy as fucking pie. We can pick any fucking nigga with a bandana off the street and say he did it. And nigga go in. It's all love. These motherfuckers can uh, uh, concoct and, and, and make a motherfucker confess for some shit he didn't do. We'll never fucking find out what the fuck actually happened, so we got to get off that shit. That's conspiracy theory. The only thing that we can actually do is what we can handle. Me, myself. I'm not rocking with the negative shit no more. If a nigga do some negative shit, I'm going to treat him like he just fucked another nigga in the ass. Until we start pushing these type of energies away, shit going to continue. And if they are doing um, organ harvesting and all that shit like that, we'll never fucking find out. Because they know where to pick from. They're not getting the fucking doctor up on the hill. They're not getting the, the uh, Farrakhan and him. No. Al Sharpton. Right here. They're pushing. How, how, how does this not make sense? How does this not make sense? The same fucking, the rap trap, the same people that push Kodak Black, Glock 9, Skinny from the 9, Lil Pump, and all these fucking retarded ass rappers in your face, gang, 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 is the same people that not only run the pharmaceutical companies, but actually run the black market with organ harvesting. The same people, they're telling you what, have you not noticed, like, the Percocet drug is, that's the hottest shit. How the fuck did that become the hottest shit? Because the rapper said it. Until we actually start, actually start putting a spotlight on our, our on our rappers, our leaders, this going to continue. Until we start putting responsibility on their shoulders, it's going to continue. If they needed to chop off Nipsey Hussle because he was going to expose something that's, that's, oh man, this, this is just too much right here. How could we have stopped that? Not sure, because would we have respected Nipsey if he wasn't a gangster, street nigga, rapper? Maybe we're putting our respect in the wrong people's hands. Maybe we should start upholding the black doctors, the black neurosurgeons. Maybe we should start 
um, congratulating education. Why do we champion the place where we die the most? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be smarter to champion the place where we help the most? Wouldn't that make sense? You come over here on the street nigga rapper side and your death goes uh, unsolved. Unsolved murder. Body found with no organs in it. Positive rapper gets killed. But we pay no fucking mind to the motherfucker that spent eight years in college to become a nurse. Then he went back to become a... Uh, 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 a master surgeon and shit like that. We don't even know them motherfuckers. They live in big, big houses, big cars, big money. Why are we bedazzled by that shit? So maybe the true issue is in our mind. Because fighting this war will never win. You'll never be able to pick the needle out the haystack. Let me pull the slime off the shit to find out what a seed is. Too many shields. Successful rapper from the hood. Gang member. You're not going to convince the people that don't want to be convinced. But if we have it right here in plain sight. Hey man, look at this shit, man. Hey man. This man, he had no fucking known enemies. The police can say he had a long list of fucking enemies. Somebody from back in the day. Uh, some blood gang members. They don't know shit about this gang life. Some uh, some uh, uh, blood gang members that wanted some stripes and shit like that. It was their initiation. The same people that are in control of the industry that we put all our fucking... Right now, we got an accuser right now that's saying that um, Jay-Z got some hair from her when she was 15. We continue to get chopped down, but no one, as soon, in a few days, y'all ain't going to give a fuck about this shit. Y'all will be right on to the next thing, continuing to do what you're doing. And I believe that sobriety has a lot to do with this shit. Because as long as you high, you'll just go with the flow. Uh, and you won't change shit. You'll cry for a couple hours about this shit. But you're going to get over it. And they know it. And they know it. You're not going to do shit. You go out, you, you'll go. protest for a couple of days. We want justice. We want, the fuck? You'll leave? But if you did something within yourself, it's easier saying, I'm done with this. Hey man, whatever hey, whatever we got going on, we're gonna squash it because we have a real enemy out here. Let this be the, the beacon that shows, hey, this ain't no game. Because the streets are not a game. Niggas are dying every day, every night. A nigga's gonna die tonight. Not about Nipsey. About a bitch, about some money, about a robbery. Where did the dope come from? How long are we going to goddamn, oh yeah, you know, goddamn Willie Lynch and goddamn, you know, they fucked our head up. Okay, right now, right now today, we can make a change and say, I, I know what they did to us, all good, I'm going to be strong with the day. I'm not going for it no more. That's how you motherfucking respect the motherfucker after they gone. Not about protesting, it's already, it's over with. It's over with. Ain't no coming back from this. All that we can do now is try to make sure it don't happen again. How? We know how improbable it is that a fucking gangbanger just came down a block and, and actually hit a nigga in the fucking head. Niggas can't shoot. We know this. But we also know how good they are at covering shit up. 
If we really believe our enemy who is who our enemy is, we know we can't go into this shit on no, I, I know the truth. I give a fuck what you know. What can you prove? No camera footage. The camera footage showed this call. Then it showed this call. The camera wasn't on. Nobody seen nothing. All of a sudden, the tapes didn't work. How many times we didn't seen this shit? We can clean ourselves up and say, all right, look, no more. No more. If we, I said this when Zach died. I said this when Lil Lonnie died. If we can go on a 30 day no crime spree for 30 days, no crime, thirty days, no crime. If we would have did it when Zach died, we would have had a chance. We would have did it when G Money died, we would have had a chance. We would have did it when Lil Lonnie died, we would have had a chance. We can keep going. This shit is not going to stop. It's not going to stop. Only we can stop it. Only we can stop it. As long as what's cool is what's gangster and what's gangster is killing them. It's not, it's not gangster to kill a police officer. It's not gangster to kill a white woman or a white man. It's gangster to kill a nigga. Read through the line. So as soon as we change what's cool, we can make some progress. But as long as we, as long as in a couple of days y'all go back to regular scheduled activities and just say R.I.P. Hustle, R.I.P. Hustle, nothing gonna change, and it'll be the same. So don't, don't, don't burden me to cry and all that shit like that. No, no. It was sad when. The, the the average nigga in Mobile and Baldwin County on Fairhope died. You want a nigga to cry? Y'all niggas don't give a fuck about nothing. Y'all are internet motherfuckers. And y'all just doing what's cool. What's cool right now is to say R.I.P. Hustle. What was cool yesterday is to say um, Surviving Cardi B. Y'all make memes and y'all get over the shit. And that's what they know. We're like a fucking, we just, we don't think. We just, we just like zombies and parasites. We just eat. We just move. You, you give us some stimulation and we'll go for it. Then we'll just do whatever. You can just make us do whatever. We don't think. We'll, we're, we're, we're just, everybody's just individual. We, we don't, we, we're powerless because we, we're, we're separated. We think it's a hive mind. We, we don't think as a hive mind. But if we thought as a hive mind, like, man, we could really save the next nigga by saying, hey, we done with that. All that jealousy, all the dope, all the games, everything that they hide our deaths and our murders behind to steal our organs, or to stop our movements, or to stop our progression, it would be like Martin Luther King, and we would have open season. But because we all we want to do is put up signs and put up fucking hashtags, we'll have another situation like this in a couple months. And I won't cry in either. I'll cry tears of joy if we go for a seven day, seven days of no crime. But I live in pain. Perpetual. Nothing's changed. There's no difference. This is all the same. Yesterday, today, this keeps going. So as long as you got that rag on, as long as you rep that shit like that, as long as it's fuck them other niggas from the other side... Save your bullshit. You don't give a fuck about Nipsey Hussle. 
If you did, you would do something and you would not be holding no sign or putting out no hashtag. You will be changing the environment that the enemy has to come into to destroy us. As long as the environment they come into to destroy us is an environment of chaos and nobody sees nothing because everybody's trying to This will happen time and time again. As long as our reaction is go to the internet and vent and don't do anything in your real life or go out here for a fucking photo op and hold signs and don't do anything to change your real life or your cousin's life or your brother's life, nothing will change. When that shit happened with Gucci, it showed something. You, you want to talk about conspiracy theory? Let's talk about this. When that Gucci shit happened, and they saw how fast that shit came and went, and niggas, street niggas, I, I'm, I'm, starting to, I'm starting to have a theory about street niggas. The street niggas rebelled by buying more Gucci. Anytime that the enemy sees, if, if the Civil War, you got the, the uh, fucking Union, you got the Confederate. If the Confederate saw that, you know what I'm saying, the Union was divided, it would be able to destroy them. So they can plan an attack just by that. Oh, they're divided right there. I know how to attack. They, they don't work together. You can't win a war by being divided if we are the fucking people that are being attacked. We have to come with one mind. We are divided. Some of us are mad, some of us don't give a fuck. But it affects all of us. And they like, how the fuck these motherfuckers, they, all of them are wearing the same uniform. How do they not feel like they're on the same team?